Greetings, friends. I like the channel Morgoth's Review. Link in the description. He did a great video recently in which he reflected upon the popular science fiction writer Isaac Asimov and his series Foundation, which was written in the early 50s, although he did some more sequels in the 1980s. So I want to summarize some of the main points which Morgoth brought up and add some of my own points. So much of this video I must give credit to Morgoth for. If you place your faith in individuality, you will be disappointed. Because at the core of our being, we desire a connection to God. Only God can give a civilization life. The pagans may say, it's not God the Father whom we must connect with, but rather a series of gods or spirits that we must worship, or the goddess, Mother Nature, or Gaia. While I agree with the pagans that man needs a spiritual connection, I obviously disagree that you should worship these spirits, that you can get life and power from them in this world. That I do not deny. The real question is, what do you get beyond this world? And in that case, only God the Father can give you everlasting life. All other beings or gods are ultimately deception. But I don't mean to critique paganism in this video. I mean, I already have, but in the, I have to do that in a separate video. Here, I'm just going to focus on the globalist or liberal utopia or dystopia. The globalists want to create a world in which individual man reigns supreme, where rationality and science rule. That is, until rationality and science are no longer necessary. We can see now that well-distinguished scientists are shunned if they question the official orthodoxy, because that threatens the control mechanism. This technological individualist world has some parallel in Asimov's Foundation series. I haven't read Isaac Asimov's work, but listening to Morgoth discuss it, it seems that Asimov put forward the notion of this civilization unquestioned, as if it was naturally a good thing that humans should want to live this way. I would also say there's some parallel with the Empire in Star Wars. Although in Star Wars, it's more obvious that the Empire is bad because you can contrast them with the supposedly good rebels. Although the rebels have no god either. They just, some of them use the force for good. The force itself is neutral. It's like, oh, everything's gray. It's just this neutral energy that you can use. There's no absolute good thinking conscious being no god the father in foundation one man has figured out how to mathematically predict the future at least in terms of macro scale events for instance if one planet will eventually dominate another planet economically or militarily he determines that his own civilization is doomed to slowly collapse I think this illustrates the devil's dilemma. He wants to create a separate universe where he can pretend God doesn't exist, but it's doomed to slowly fall apart. On the other hand, what about a civilization connected with God? Critics of God say he's a tyrant, and it's true that in the Old Testament he often appears cruel. I would say that while the Old Testament God does sometimes burn people with fire, usually he simply removes his protection from people when he knows they have turned away from him. And it is earthly events which cause people's downfall, usually invading armies or diseases. This illustrates that earth is a place of death, of continuous decay when we turn away from our true source. Yes, it's a place of life, of course, but we can't seem to live long enough to remember anything important and to develop spiritually. You have to be connected with some divine element. Otherwise, you're forced to exist in a cold, material place, which is constantly decaying, the same way our DNA is slowly mutating and we are degenerating. People mock the Bible and say, oh, well, this is wrong, that's wrong. But one of the things I wholeheartedly believe is that 
the first humans lived around 800 to 900 to 1,000 years. They would not lie about something so specific when they give you the exact number of years these people lived. It's because of, you know, genetic mutation. We were slowly degenerating. People back then would have been healthier. I mean, I don't mean in, in the recent history, but over time, you know, they wouldn't have needed glasses. They wouldn't have had these chronic diseases. God is not interested in controlling man. Man is an expression of God. We have the divine spark. God, God is sufficient in himself and he knows it. But he wants to give man the chance to freely return to him. But let's say for the sake of argument that God does want you to be his subject. Well, we like to think that we can become gods. We can become our own God and rise up to godhood. I think this is a deception. Maybe if we are really, really loving and live the right sort of life, who knows what our future is, but we have to accept that we must serve someone. It's either God or the devil. You're either going to end up apart from God or close to him. I know that's a bit simplistic, but don't fall into this idea that, oh, there's a middle path, there's a middle way. There isn't. The liberal utopia, you know, has its roots with liberty, freedom, the Statue of Liberty in New York. You know, that goes back to the pagan goddess. I know I wouldn't bring up paganism too much, but and that has connections in the French Revolution. And what happened in the French Revolution? A bloodbath and loss of freedom and the rise of a tyrant. So the liberal utopia is actually a world where man is unfree. It's a place where people think they're free. That's the key distinction. We think we're free, but actually we're not. The liberal utopia is really about control because our capacity for thought and reflection has been so stifled. After all, we have so many personal privileges like voting and having abortions. And we have so many simple pleasures like plentiful food, automobiles and television. But we're unable to think for ourselves, let alone try to change the world. Our intuitive powers are crap. We're taught to be happy slaves. And perhaps more painfully, we are isolated. We have limited contact with the other people in the prison. The controllers designed it this way because if we realize that our pain is shared by so many others, we become a force for change. We want a community, not a collection of atomized individuals. A community has relation with communion. In having connections with other people, you may argue we have some connection to God. But I'm sure you can think of other examples in history where people were very collective and they were worshipping the devil. So perhaps that's not 100% correct, but in our current times we are so isolated, we do need this connection sense of belonging in order to regain a spiritual connection. My neighborhood in Toronto has zero sense of community. We're all isolated in our individual apartments with nothing to say to anyone else, even when we speak English, which many people here use only as a second language or they can only speak very poorly. I will eventually leave this area. Some naive people will say, all you need is love. Bum, ba -da -ba -da -bum. Just show a little spirit. Da, 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 da. Talk to your neighbors. Yeah, and we can all just have a good time. Yeah. Well, that would be like uprooting four or five different plant species and throwing them together in a heap on the grass. Some of them, if they're lucky, may put down roots. Most of them will wither in the sun. The globalists know this. That's why multiculturalism and mass immigration is part of their agenda, at least with regards to the West. A nation ought to be able to have relations with another nation without any global organization poking its nose into their affairs. Whatever you think of Trump, he's been criticized for so-called going it alone in foreign affairs. But on its own, shouldn't the freedom to go it alone in foreign affairs be sacred in a liberal utopia? Instead, we're taught that we have to ask mommy and daddy if our nation can make its own trade agreements and alliances. 
We keep losing power over our lives. They boil the frogs slowly, not too much in one generation, so people don't get too alarmed. But their children will give up more rights. During the American Civil War, the income tax was first created as a temporary expediency to fund the war. Of course, it never went away. And hurrah, the Union beat the South, thanks in large part to the thousands of poor immigrants whom the Union immediately enlisted and then sent to the front lines. The globalists who created the League of Nations after the First World War and then the United Nations after the Second World War used the apparent darkness of man, his violence, as an excuse to restrain man. However, the creation of these organizations has failed to make the world more peaceful. Violence has merely shifted to the peripheries in the form of private armies, terrorists, and guerrillas, while within the developed countries, violence is conducted primarily by drug-fueled ethnic gangs. Without God, both capitalistic and socialistic societies turn into the same thing materialistic, heavily bureaucratic societies where all power is in the hands of a few pathological people. What happened with the capitalist barons in the late 19th century, above all with people like John D. Rockefeller, was used as justification for socialism, because you could look at Rockefeller's oil empire and say, wow, he was brutally efficient. He produced a giant monopoly and put countless competitors out of business, whether by underpricing them, overspending them on legal fees, or simply having the right connections. Rockefeller was also a devout Christian, but it seems the Protestant work ethic became pathologized in his mind, and everything became about the pursuit of efficiency. The critics say there have to be limits on the sole pursuit of efficiency. You need to care about people and communities. But then, when socialists gained power in the 20th century, they didn't care about people or communities, just power. In fact, these regimes hold the record for how many of their own people a government can murder. The devil was hiding in both sides, that is, the same devilish desire to control and restrain the development of humans. On the one side, he cloaked himself in the noble ideal of efficiency, and on the other side, he cloaked himself in the noble ideal of personal liberty. But those ideals would soon be cast aside once they were no longer necessary. Hasta luego, amigos!